Well, this is a task I've been dreading, but I think it's finally come. We've had various problems with the fridge intermittently uh, coming on and off. Oftentimes it will come on. Uh, sometimes it seems like we can go eight or nine days and then it has to defrost, resets itself and it comes back on. But the last week it's been intermittent, even just within a day or two coming on and off. So I've started this big project. We're gonna take the fridge out and make some changes to improve the fridge performance. Well, when I set out on this journey to improve the fridge performance, I had in my mind that I thought the likely culprit was the 12 volt control module on the back of the fridge. Once I got in there, I realized that actually that worked great. The thing I needed to do to improve fridge performance was to add some extra ventilation. So in this video, let me walk you through the steps to uh, uninstall the fridge, get in there. I'll show you some of the troubleshooting I did to determine that the control module was great. And then I'll show you the extra vent that I put into our class B to help our fridge performance. Uh, this is a Nova Cool fridge. Uh, there's, uh, I understand from the forums on Facebook with this particular model of Winnebago Paseo that a lot of people have had a problem with this fridge and that Novacool has uh, offered a replacement control module and that solves the problem. For starters so far, I've just removed the, uh, the two doors, the freezer door and the top refrigerator door. And uh, then we're going after these little bolts that hold it into the cabinet. There are small plastic plugs that cover Phillips screws that hold the fridge into the cabinet. I've put down just a drop cloth here to protect the floor so that when I uh, move this fridge out, I can set it down and not hurt the floor. To help keep screws in the plugs, it's good to have a little container to put everything in so you don't misplace it. I think I've got the majority of the screws out that hold it in. There is, I know, a safety cable that attaches here underneath the passenger side. And so that's part of what secures the fridge in as well. So I'm gonna undo that safety cable. Got the fridge starting to come out. I'm gonna take a look in at the back. Now from uh, the bench seat on the driver's side and just take a look and make sure that I'm not gonna pull any cables unintendedly. This is the back of the fridge. You can see the uh, power cable there. And you can see it's just resting here on the plywood. So I don't see anything that should be holding me in. All right, next up here is to remove this white cover so that we can uh, detach the power cable and hopefully get to see the controller module. With that cover off, we can see here are the main components. My Winnebago Paseo was built in 2017, and you can see this particular fridge was designed to work on either 120 volt or on the 12 volt battery system. When Winnebago installed this, they only used the 12 volt connection. And some have said, that's why we need to have, can have problems with this module and it needs to be replaced. Well, I've turned on the power and the fridge is working. The fan there is running. I called the folks at Novacool. They said to check for any kind of loose connections here on this controller board. Let's see if I can get it to stop. Connections seem fine. In looking at the design of the fridge, one of the things I think I'm gonna do, uh, we're testing it right now. I turned it back on and it's running again. So I've talked to the folks at Novacool and they suggested to keep doing it on, do a test. I've checked all the wires at the back, uh, the connections to the controller and the thermostatic coupler. Those all seem to be fine. So the gentleman at Novacool said, turn it on, let's try it for a while, run it and see if we can cause, uh, have the air 
ex exhibit itself again. One of the things I think I'm gonna do while I have the fridge out though, is I am gonna put a vent in here. So this is the cabinet where I've removed the fridge from. You can see I've got the fridge sitting out here now uh, in between our two bench seats at the back. And this wall right here is uh, against where the fan draws on the opposite side of this fridge, which is the, you know, the cooling fan for it. And so one of the things I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut an access hole just so that down here on this sidewall, there'll be a place to get cooler air into the fridge because right now I think that could be some of the problem or maybe a problem. There is uh, places for the air to vent on the other side. There is a grill up here. You can see for uh, exhaust of the uh, microwave and up here another exhaust out of this whole cabinet where the fridge and the microwave live. So I think exhaust is okay, but I, I'd like it to be able to intake cooler air. So I'm gonna put in a vent here. So here's our new little vent hole. Hopefully that will line up nicely with the fan on the fridge, which has continued to be working ever since we turned it back on. Well, I'm back in the van again. It's about three days later since I pulled the fridge out and I've spoken with the folks at Novacool. Uh, Jim has been very, very helpful at Novacool and he's had me you know, run the fridge for the last three days to see if I can recreate the problem. Well, sure enough, fridge is working great. It's cold, it's running well. So I got talking to Jim a little bit and I'm of the theory, since none of the connections are loose, I think it has to do with ventilation and so I've added this hole that I cut into the side cabinet. I used a little bit of uh, stain to hopefully try to try to match it. I'm going to put a little bit of a screen on it to make sure nothing ever falls into it. And then when I took the fridge out, it had this white insulation uh, all around this area here. And it occurs to me that that's, that's not helping anything either because the fan is blowing, there's a lot of air coming this way right now, but if we, we take a look at the cabinet that it's in, my new hole should allow a little bit of cooler ventilated air to come in, but you can see there's really not a lot of place for it to go. It can release into where those uh, drawers are, uh, and you can see we've got our mac and cheese in there for our, our fine dining while we're camping. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a hole in this side of this insulation as well, just so that there's a better chance for the air to circulate and for the air to, uh, air to flow a, a little smoother, because I think that's probably been part of my problem. I'm just gonna attach a little bit of screen on the inside of this hole, just to make sure no foreign objects can come through and get into the fan of the fridge. Well, I reinstalled the fridge and with this new vent in place, we've not had a problem at all. So the fix to this had nothing to do with the electronics, just allowing some better airflow. Let me know in the comments if you've done anything to improve the ventilation for your RV fridge, or if you've got other tips that make your RVing even better. And come join us on the road for more Forward Journey.